Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, once again to Messiah and Messiah alone, be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today, once again, dear brothers and sisters, I'm here. I believe today is the 16th day. I believe today, sorry, today is the 15th day of the third month of the year 2018. And today, dear brothers and sisters, Messiah is wanting me to share a very urgent word which Messiah has given for his bride, dear brothers and sisters, about his extremely imminent return, dear brothers and sisters. Messiah is talking about the time about his return. Messiah is giving us 14 instructions and 7 comforting promises, dear brothers and sisters, in this world. So, yes, dear brothers and sisters, once again, we all do feel the urgency, Lord, as Lord is putting in our hearts and in our spirit, we can feel that we are entering, dear brothers and sisters, once again, the month of Nizan, which is the first month, according to the book of Exodus, according to the biblical cal calendar, this is the first month we are en entering into. We are entering into the month of Passover, dear brothers and sisters. This is a month which should remind us the incredible, incredible, incredible extremes which Messiah, which God the Father, yod heh vav -He has went on our behalf so we can have life and life in abundance so that we can have an eternal life through the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Dear brothers and sisters, the Bible all, all through tells us, Paul tells us in Ephesians 1, 7, I believe that in him and only in him we have redemption through his precious blood. Through his precious blood only there is forgiveness of sins. And as we enter, dear brothers and sisters, the month of Nizan and as Messiah is warning me to share this urgent word, dear brothers and sisters, it's once again pointing to the same fact that rapture is indeed, indeed, extremely, extremely imminent, dear brothers and sisters. Messiah says the time is now, dear brothers and sisters. We need to wake up. We need to be ready. We need to be in his will. We need to serve him. We need to glorify him. And we need to occupy till the day he comes. And before we begin, dear brothers and sisters, once again, we do encourage you as we keep telling, dear brothers and sisters, on our channel, and we speak what the Lord leads us to, dear brothers and sisters, before we even begin the video, we pray for ourselves, dear brothers and sisters. We anoint the time, we anoint the video, we ask the Spirit of God to guide us, dear brothers and sisters. So, once again, before we start the word, dear brothers and sisters, we keep telling on our videos that please, please, please do invite the presence of God. Let the Holy Spirit guide you, dear brothers and sisters. There are extremely, extremely high chances that you will be either deceived or missing on some points which the Lord has for you through this message. Because Bible clearly tells us, dear brothers and sisters, that only the Comforter, Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit only can lead us to all the truth. If in your flesh, if in our flesh, we are thinking that we can listen. And that's not, tr that's true for every channel you're watching, dear brothers and sisters, or wherever you go, whatever social platform, or from the pulpits, if you're listening to any preaching, dear brothers and sisters, it's so very crucial to invite the Spirit of God, which will do two things. It will lead us to absolute truth, and number two, without the Spirit of God, we won't be 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. John chapter 16, verse 13. These are our authority. We encourage you to dig into it, what it exactly means. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. The author himself explain you those two scriptures, which it exactly means. Which will help us, dear brothers and sisters. Number one, to understand the remez. Remez is... The hidden meaning in the scriptures which is embedded under the text. So it will be basically whatever hidden message Lord has, which is streamlined for you. That's what the Holy Spirit can reveal to you. Number one. Number two. In our flesh, dear brothers and sisters, if we come with hyped up with all our emotions and everything on this platform, chances are that, that Satan will use it and deceive us. And we do see happening it. All around us, dear brothers and sisters, we don't want to get there, dear brothers and sisters. We want to 
be in truth and in spirit we want to invite the presence of god these are supernatural messages which has to be understood by the pre by the presence of god it has to be guided by the holy spirit it's not my message it's the lord's message it's all about him it's a if we should be always exalting and glorify him messiah and messiah alone because it's all about him because he was bruised he was bruised for my our iniquities he was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So it's all about him and by his stripes. By his stripes and his stripes alone, dear brothers and sisters, we are healed. So today, dear brothers and sisters, we have a short message as the Lord is leading me to talk about. Today we'll talk about dwelling in the pit and how in these end moments the enemy is pushing us in the pit, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, we do encourage you to listen to the entire message as well as Messiah's message, Messiah's word which God has given us and the, what the Holy Spirit is leading me to talk about dear brothers and sisters. So if time is your limiting factor, once again, please do it in two or three settings. We do apologize dear brothers and sisters that our videos are getting longer, but it's not that we want to do it that way dear brothers and sisters. It's all guided by the Spirit of God. It's all what the Ruach HaKodesh leads us to. So. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, we do encourage you. If time is your limiting factor, please do it in two or three settings. However the Lord leads, let the Holy Spirit, let the Spirit of God guide you. That will give us, because we don't have any confidence in our flesh. Our confidence should be all in Messiah. All in Messiah and Messiah alone. So let's, before further delay, dear brothers and sisters, let's start with the word of prayer. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. That our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us one more day, one more message, one more day filled with your divine, divine protection. One more day that you have fought in this cosmic warfare for us, Lord. One more day that you have divinely provided us, you have divinely protected us. One more day that all your divine promises which has been fulfilled in our life. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are our maker, you are our creator, Lord. We just thank you that you have called us in this calling. The one true God, Yadhe Vabhe. You have called us. We thank you, Lord, for all the divine messages, the supernatural messages which you are giving us. That our Messiah's coming is so very near and for telling us today that our Messiah is knocking at the doorstep. At our door, dear brothers and sisters. We bring our dear brothers and sisters today, Lord, in your presence so that they can also understand, Lord, for our dear brothers and sisters that Messiah is indeed today knocking at our door so that we can open the door for Messiah so that he can sup in with us and we can eat with him. Help us today, Lord, so that your supernatural message can be revealed to us through your spirit. We thank you, Lord, today as we... Enter the month of Nizan. We stagger, Lord, at once again to embrace, to embrace, to recall the extremes, the incredible, incredible, incredible extremes that you have gone on our behalf, that we might have life and life in abundance. We thank you, Father, that by your grace and your grace alone you have called us and not by any merit of our own. We thank you, Father, that you have allowed your son Yeshua Hamashiach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to purchase our liberty from the law, to purchase our redemption, our access to you. Father, we thank you today for the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, our Comforter, that he is so diligent to open the scriptures, to lead us to all the truth, to the diligent Lord. I pray, Father, today that you would please increase in each one of us a new appetite in our dear fellow brethren, in our dear brothers and sisters, a renewed hunger, Lord, for you and your word. That we each may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. But also, Father, we each might be more discerning, more perceptive to what you precisely have for each one of us. In the days that remain, rather than getting lost in this world and worldly things. We thrill, Father, once again, as we discover in your word that the exciting demonstrations of your precision and your love. And yet, Father, as we behold our horizon. And we sense the urgency of the perilous times we are living in as you are telling us in our words. We do seek discernment, Father, that we might know what it, what it is you, you, Lord, who would have each one of us do. Because we do understand, Father, that 
Opportunity is not mandate that you have called each one of us to a specific task. Oh, Father, I pray today that you would, through your Holy Spirit, please make that evidently clear to each one of us, to our dear fellow brethren, to our dear brothers and sisters, that in the days that remain, which is extremely, extremely short, that we might each be more fruitful and more faithful stewards of the opportunities you are presenting us with. And Father, once again, I bring this time and bring myself in your presence and pray, Lord, Today, as I'm about to convey your message to your appointed people, Lord, please be my strength and my weakness. I claim on Psalm chapter 141, verse 3, and pray, Father, that please do set a guard over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips as I convey your message to your appointed people. And right this moment, in the name of our King Yeshua HaMashiach, using our authority of Luke 10, 19, I bind every evil of the enemy which is coming at this time, which is coming at this video, which is coming at our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters, and I pray for the hedge of protection for each one of us. Father, I pray that may this message reach to your appointed people to accomplish your mighty will through your spirit, Lord, through the spirit of God. And please do enlighten the hearts and minds of our all, all our dear fellow brethren through your Holy Spirit, Lord, to understand what you precisely have for them through this message in the days, in these end of the end of the end moments. And all this I pray in the holy mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. Indeed. Amen and amen and amen. All right. So dear brothers and sisters, the word is... A little long word, but I'll try to go through it slowly. This is the word Messiah wants us to share. This is the word which we got on the 30th day of the first month of the year 2018. And this is the time Messiah has prompted us to share. Dear brothers and sisters, please don't get lost in the time frame and date. God's word is not a bottle of peanut butter, dear brothers and sisters. It doesn't come with an expiry date. And if you are thinking so, then the Bible, perhaps what Paul is telling us about rapture and everything must have expired. That's how the enemy is trying to play, dear brothers and sisters. We need to be very careful about what and how we are giving in our flesh. This is the, We are in the end of the end moments, the grand finale. We are in the grand finale. We want to fight the good fight, not... With our strength, but not with our might or power, but with the Spirit of God. So, dear brothers and sisters, this word was given on the 30th day of the first month of the year 2018. This year, and Lord wants us to share right this moment. And I heard the Lord say, my son, I love you all. Tell my people, my son, number one, to get ready. For thy Messiah is knocking on your door, waiting at your doorstep. I am with thee and thy family, and I will protect thee. My children, come in my presence, for I am your refuge and strong tower, a very present help during your trouble. My son, tell my people, number two, surrender their evil ways and desires of flesh. My son, tell my people, number three, seek my face with all their heart, all their mind, all their soul, all their strength. Dear brothers and sisters, here I want to take a very short, brief pause. And this is a commandment which is given all through. We know it's the Shema in Deuteronomy 6, 5 is given. But we see this all over reiterated in, across the Gospels. Messiah is telling and he has added one more thing to what is said in the Shema. So you can dig on that, dear brothers and sisters, that will be an adventure. But what I wanted to mention here is God is telling us to seek him with all our heart, mind, soul and strength, dear brothers and sisters. We use this word so frequently, we throw it around so loosely, dear brothers and sisters. It will be a good idea, dear brothers and sisters, if the Lord leads you, the Spirit of God guides you to do a won't study on these words to exactly know if we are supposed to seek him with our soul we need to exactly know what exactly is soul if god is telling us if we are supposed to seek him with all our heart are we talking about the organ which is heart which pumps out blood so those are things which you can take it to the lord dear brothers and sisters to do a study on that the word study for heart mind soul and strength and spirit perhaps Continuing on Messiah's word, I am indeed coming very soon for my own. There is absolutely no more time. 
There is no more time, my son. Dear brothers and sisters, Messiah is telling twice that there is absolutely no more time. There is no more time, my son. Dear brothers and sisters, do we know when it is? No, we don't. But we do know that it is imminent. It is any moment. Are we supposed to know when it is, dear brothers and sisters? That's a question we have already addressed. We leave it for you to take it to your prayer closet, whether doing that hunting, when is the time? Whether it will be a rewarding study or a rewarding thing to do in your spiritual walk, dear brothers and sisters, that's totally something which at the privacy of your own will and in your prayer closet, you need to converse. You need to talk with Messiah and see what Messiah has for that. So, but Messiah is indeed telling that I am indeed coming very soon for my own and there is absolutely no more time. And he repeats, there is no more time, my son. Tell my people, number four, to prepare their hearts for thy Messiah will come in an hour, he knoweth not. Dear brothers and sisters, again, Messiah is specifying on the time. So, continuing, my children, my children, this is the time of my coming. This is the time, dear brothers and sisters, Messiah is repeating, this is the time. Let's keep our eyes fixed on that, that this is the time. Continuing, Messiah says, number five, be in my light. For I am the light of the world. I am coming to judge the deeds of the darkness. Messiah is coming to judge the deeds of the darkness. Aren't we so thankful today, dear brothers and sisters, that he has called us to his light? And we get a chance till the day of rapture to be in that light. Praise God. Continue. My son, tell my people to trust in me. To trust my word, number seven. My son, tell my people to obey my commands. As I'm always for you, dear brothers and sisters, that was number eight, to obey my commands. Before we get into our extrapolation of that, dear brothers and sisters, we wanted to mention that from the word which we received, obey my commands, Messiah is giving us 14 instructions today to do. So that's what Messiah means by telling, obeying the commands like to trust in me, to trust my word, to be in my presence. Those are the commands we are talking about here, dear brothers and sisters. The enemy will take you to a detour and then we will, enemy will take you to a detour and he will try to get you in that grace versus law track and a scholastic debate and things alike. Dear brothers and sisters, we should not have any room, we should not give any room to the enemy for all these scholastic debates or grace versus law. It is done. It is finished. John 1930. Messiah has fulfilled the law. Messiah has paid it all. We just have to get in his presence. And, and Romans 8, 1, as we use it, perhaps it is used in a wrong manner. It is thrown around that there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Yes, there is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Those who walk according to the Spirit. So let's just be in His presence. Walk according to the Spirit. He has done it all. He has won it all for you and me. There is nothing we need to do. We just need to reap the benefits of the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeshua HaMashiach was crucified on a cross made of wood. Yet Messiah and Messiah only made the hill on which the cross stood. That's the point, dear brothers and sisters. That's the point. So there is no question of grace versus law and things like everything has been done. It has been paid in full. Adding to trying to add anything. Forget about works. Any talk about adding to the salvation is blasphemy, dear brothers and sisters. It's been paid in full. But there are other dimensions, other aspects of the salvation which we talked about and we will leave a link. If the Lord leads you, you can try and understand more about salvation and redemption which our eight-year-old daughter of the Lord led through the Spirit of God to do, couple, I believe, a couple of videos on that. We'll leave a link for that, dear brothers and sisters, so you can take a look at your leisure if the Lord leads you to. So continue on today's word. So Lord says, my son, tell my people to obey my commands. These are not commandments. These are commands, dear brothers and sisters, which the Lord is laying out in today's word. And Messiah continues, as I am always for you to protect you all, to deliver you all from every peril. Isn't that comforting, dear brothers and sisters? Messiah is for us to deliver us from how many peril? Every peril. My son, the enemy is out there roaring like a lion, trying to confuse many. Dear brothers and sisters, we see that happening. 
Tell my people, number nine, to be in my presence. Number 10, not to be overcome. This, this is a key one, dear brothers and sisters, what Messiah is telling. Tell my people, number 10, not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome every evil by my good. Dear brothers and sisters, this is the key point. Not that all the 14 instructions are extremely important, but this one we need to zero in, dear brothers and sisters, that not to be overcome by the evil which is going around, but to overcome every evil by Messiah's good. He will supply us the strength and every single weapon and every single thing. He has provided, provided us, a, as a matter of fact, in his word, dear brothers and sisters, to what to do. Either way, continuing to the word, the Lord has heard the praise of his own. I repeat, the Lord has heard the prayers of his own and he and he alone will restore his own. Praise God. It is time to trust, number 11, and obey number 12 rather than falling for the doubts and number 13 and walking in flesh. I am coming and coming very soon. Be ye ready. Shalom, my beloved children. I love you all. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Dear brothers and sisters, what staggering, staggering words today Messiah is giving us today for his bride. There indeed, I truly believe, that we truly believe, dear brothers and sisters, that there is indeed no better way to encourage, edify, and exhort Messiah's bride. Messiah's message today does it all. We can choose to dwell on aspects which the enemy is trying to snatch, up, snatch us away or take us away from the essence of the message, from the essence of the word, or we can dwell on the message which Messiah has given us for our encouragement, for our exhortation, and for our edification, the choice is always ours, dear brothers and sisters. But today, Messiah's message does it all. Today, as a matter of fact, there is so much going on in today's word which Messiah has given us. Today, let me just break it down real quick. Messiah, today in his word, once again, he is emphasizing about his return. By telling us that Messiah is coming very soon and now is the time. There is absolutely no more time, Messiah says. Now is the time and there is absolutely no more time. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to be on our toes. It's any moment now. In essence, Messiah's return is upon us. Any moment, any moment indeed. And it doesn't have any preceding events to occur. It is imminent, dear brothers and sisters. If there is anything else being preached or you're trying to buy, somebody is trying to sell you. Anything else, dear brothers and sisters, it's up to you to do a diligent, dig diligently in the scriptures, dear brothers and sisters. We are not here to sell our views. We are here to lead you to the scriptures and let the Spirit of God, let the Holy Spirit, the author himself, lead you through the scriptures, what the Holy Spirit has in the scripture about the timing of rapture and things alike, dear brothers and sisters. And for everything it is like that, what we are talking on this channel, dear brothers and sisters. So... I looked up, as a matter of fact, about imminent. Dictionary.com breaks down the me meaning of imminent for us. It's, it says, which means likely to occur at any moment. It's any moment, dear brothers and sisters. And also in today's word, dear brothers and sisters, Messiah has 14 instructions for his bride. One, four, 14 instructions. This is something, dear brothers and sisters, which most of us will try to skip, overlook, and not worry about too much. And of course, there will be several reasons to justify our decision of skipping those 14 instructions. And they will all seem very logical and reasonable. But without getting into that, dear brothers and sisters, irrespective of the fact, we like it or not, Messiah has 14 instructions for his bride, which he mentioned in his word. And let me just summarize it. Let me just reiterate them once more. Number one. To get ready. Number two, to surrender our evil ways and desires of the flesh. To seek Messiah's face with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. Number four, to prepare our hearts. How do we do that? King David has a model prayer when he is in Psalm 51, when he says that create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me dear brothers and sisters that's just a model which you can look up in scriptures or however the lord leads you number five to be in messiah's light number six to trust in yeshua hamashiach in jesus christ of nazareth to trust in his word number seven 
Number eight, to obey my commands. And these commands are not commandments. Once again, dear brothers and sisters, let's not get into those tangential trip of grace and law, which the enemy wants us to go through as we spoke about. It is finished. Tetelista. It is finished, period. It is finished on the cross. So these are the commands. These are the 14 instructions, which Messiah is telling us, obey my commands to be in Messiah's presence. Number nine. Number 10, not to be overcome by evil, but to overcome evil by Messiah's good. Number 11, it is time to trust him. Number 12, it is time to obey him. Number 13, it is time not to fall for the doubts. Number 14, it is time not to walk in the flesh. Dear brothers and sisters, we do encourage you to please, please do take these instructions to your prayer closet at the privacy of your own will. And then please, please then dig diligently in the scriptures and receive what the Lord has for you through the Spirit of God. Moving on also in today's word, Messiah has some astonishing comfort. Messiah is extending his comfort to us in today's word. He has seven of those comforting words he's telling us. Messiah says, number one, he loves you. Dear brothers and sisters, it might not seem like a uh, very comforting thing to do, but the creator, the heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, he's telling, I love you. If we don't accept him as our savior, we accept him as our judge. And that's not a good place to be, dear brothers and sisters. That's not a good place. So we need to appreciate when Messiah says, I love you. He loves you. We all need to learn that and appreciate more and more what it means that God loves us. And it, it, it indeed has been demonstrated on that cross. As we enter the month of Nisan, month of Nisan, let's remember the love which has been demonstrated on that cross. Number two, the second comforting word which he's telling, Messiah is telling is, he is your very present help during your trouble. Number three, he is always for you. Number four, he is available right now to deliver you from every peril. Praise God. Number five, Messiah also says that he has heard the prayers of his own. So whatever you're praying for, dear brothers and sisters, whatever we are praying together for, Messiah has heard it. Praise God, he has heard it. What a comfort, dear brothers and sisters, to know that there is a king, a risen king, resurrected king listens to us. And number six, he says, he will restore his own. Praise God. Number seven, he is calling us. He's calling you his beloved. Brothers and sisters, that should mean a whole lot for each one of us. But dear brothers and sisters, here is the key point. That how many of us are able to grasp the magnitude of Messiah's comforting words? These seven comforting words may sound like an ordinary word to us. How many of us can grasp the magnitude of that? And the second question is, what will be the retention time of our partial understanding of these comforting words? As Paul tells us, as a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, Paul tells us, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And dear brothers and sisters, in today's word, Messiah has provided us seven comforting ways that Messiah is ready to shepherd us, ready to fix all our problems, ready to deliver us from every peril. And here, Paul, moreover, Paul is telling us in Ephesians 3, chapter 3, verse 20, that 
God is able to do what exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. I repeat, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Dear brothers and sisters, can we even grasp the meaning of that? That God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. It doesn't seem to rattle, does it? It seems to be a very, very, very far, a faint, a distant promise. Right? Dear brothers and sisters, that's the, that's the key factor which is being played out in these end moments. We see one of the first parables which Messiah spoke during Messiah's earthly ministry as recorded by Matthew in Matthew chapter 3. Excuse me, Matthew chapter 13 verses 3 through 9. We see also recorded by Mark in Mark chapter 4 verses 1 through 9. And even recorded by Luke the physician in Luke chapter 8 verses 4 through 8. And also this is one of the few parables which is explained by Messiah himself. So that leaves us basically no room for any scholastic debates about the meaning of the parable and stuff like that. And things like that. So dear brothers and sisters, this is the parable of the sower. We all have read it. We all know about it. We all have gone through it. We all have heard it from the pre preach, it, preach. It being preached from the pulpits. And now as trivial as the parable may sound, dear brothers and sisters, the parable of sower, it is not. It is simply not. Today, if you let the spirit of God guide you through this parable, and you keep revisiting this parable, dear brothers and sisters, the parable of sower. And if you let this parable grow on you every time you revisit by the Spirit of God, dear brothers and sisters, you will truly, truly realize the significance and the implications of this crucial, crucial parable of the sower, which was written for the very time we are living in. The exactly very time, the end moments we are living in. Dear brothers and sisters, how we indeed see the seed, the promises of God is becoming so hard for us to cling on to. So hard to trust God's word when he's telling us. We all are looking for tangibility every single day, everywhere, however way, however mode, however mechanism through whoever it be. How hard it is becoming to trust to and cling on to God's promises. Why? Because... Of the shallow roots in our hearts. Why? Because perhaps there are no roots at all. And what is the result? What is the result dear brothers and sisters? A minefield of the stratagems of the enemy. A minefield. And what does it do? It pushes us to the pit. And never let us come out of that pit. And that's not a one time thing. It is a very very frequently occurring perhaps on a weekly or a daily basis sometimes even without our realization the enemy is pushing us down in that pit Your brothers and sisters the truth is the enemy likes to push us in the pit and enjoys the feeling when we become pit dwellers that's how cruel the enemy is and the bible says that he appears as the angel of light in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 and he appears as the angel of light, dear brothers and sisters, to implant those cruelties in our lives and push us down the pit and makes us pit dwellers without our realization. But dear brothers and sisters, today, today, right this moment as Messiah is prompting me, let me give you the good news. Regardless, regardless whether you are thrown in, whether you slipped in or jumped in, Today you can get out of that pit. Yes, our dear fellow brethren, yes, Messiah is specifically talking about you. Whatsoever pit you are in right this moment, whatsoever pit. And yes, our dear fellow brethren, I repeat again, Messiah is not talking about the person who, seem, who seems to deal with their pit better than you do. Messiah is specifically talking about you right this moment, whatsoever your pit be. The truth is, we don't need to deal with our pits. We need to get out of our pits. And today, today, Messiah says you can do it. 
Even if you have a history of failed attempts, even if you don't think you deserve it, even if you never lived anywhere else, today you can do it. But our dear fellow brethren, here's the catch. Here's the catch. You can get yourself out. I repeat, you can't, you cannot get yourself out. As hard as we would like to try, dear brothers and sisters, but we will never, never successfully pull ourselves out of a pit. Let us remember the number one characteristic of a pit. It's mud and mire, the miry clay, the quicksand kind that gulp our feet whole. We are stuck as much as self-sufficient we would like to be. We simply cannot do this one alone, dear brothers and sisters. Somebody else has to come to our rescue. But there we have options. There we have options, dear brothers and sisters. We can opt for human help or we can opt for God. The fact that we could actually see our deliverer face to face could be a decisive advantage. Just to have an audible conversation would be great. To know someone really was listening would help. To see the look on a face or hear the tone in a voice. Now to us, that's real help. That's the tangibility. But we have to realize, dear brothers and sisters, the fact that help alone is not we are talking about. God definitely meant people to offer one another a helping hand. We are here to help each other, of course. But the trouble comes when we start completely relying on someone equally human to become our deliverer. Another person, rare though he may be, perhaps can temporarily pull us out of our pit, but he can't set us free. He can't. He cannot set us free. Let's take, let's take the example of Joseph. Let's, the son of Jacob, for instance. Perhaps we remember the fact that the first time the scripture mentions pit, Joseph was in it. Genesis chapter 37, verse 24, verses 24 through 28, where we see first time the word pit is mentioned and Joseph is in it. So let's read Genesis chapter 37, verses 24 through 28. It says, then they took him, which is Joseph. Then they took Joseph and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they, the, that those are the, and the brothers of Joseph sat down to eat a meal. And then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The brothers and sisters in the story of Joseph at this point, it perhaps sounds that getting sold into slavery was a far better option than starving to death in the bottom of the pit, right? But we see... Psalm 105, I believe, yes, Psalm 105, verses 17 and 18 records. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. And dear brothers and sisters, let us not forget the tender age of Joseph. When he's going through such excruciating circumstances. But of course... Dear brothers and sisters, from the scriptures, we do get to know that God was always in control, directing every detail from Canaan to Egypt. But from Joseph's point of view, dear brothers and sisters, many, many years passed before Joseph began to grasp the mighty plan of his true deliverer. Because he didn't have that insight at that point of time, dear brothers and sisters. So today, dear brothers and sisters, in our relational parallel, if we do, if a man or a woman pulls us out of the pit, 
solely assuming the role of a deliverer, he or she will, without even our knowledge, inadvertently sell us into slavery of one kind or the other. Almost every single time we look up to someone who is a, who becomes a deliverer at that point of time, without our knowledge, we are being sold into some form of the slavery or other. Dear brothers and sisters, at this point, we all need to take a pause and see who have delivered us in the past. And we need to think about what kind of slavery we were sold into. Scripture records several instances when God heard the cries of his people and raised up a human deliverer for them instead of insisting that his people should look to him alone and each time each time the Israelites look looked up to their human counterpart for deliverance Israel invariably returned to captivity Psalm 78 as a matter of fact mentions a disturbing record of Israel's cycle of defeat Psalm 78 verses 30, 32 and 33 says in spite of this, they still sinned and did not believe in his wondrous works. Therefore, their days he consumed in futility and their years in fear. Boy. And dear brothers and sisters, here's the important part. The Israelites did not. The Israelites did not believe in God or trust his deliverance. And we do the same thing, dear brothers and sisters, when we are not able to walk by faith, but trying to have a tangibility of our faith. Though God raised up leaders like Moses and Joshua, the nation still eventually defaulted to its old pattern. Dear brothers and sisters, perhaps, perhaps occasionally people look up to some great leaders for motivation. But they cannot rewire our hard drive. We will eventually default every time when we try to put our trust in humans for deliverance. And dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing is more futile or leaves us more fractured than trusting man to be our God. In the sense, when we assume that a human being can be our deliverer. Moreover, dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we forget what, what a mistake this was the last time we did it. Because time always has a way of distorting our memories. That's what happened to Israel. That's what happens to us. Do you remember the last failed rapture date where you put your hope on? Do you remember the last time you trusted somebody to be your deliverer and he turned out to be a deceiver? Dear brothers and sisters, but then we forget over a period of time as the time has a way to distort the remembrance of those things. And we do it again and perhaps again and on and on and on it goes. And the same thing happened to Israel. Not many years after Psalm 78 was written, Israel again found herself left mourning for help. As the Israelites faced imminent takeover by the massive army of the Assyrians. I mean, of course, God could have thwarted the assault in the blink of an eye. But God awaited on the Israelites' cry of repentance. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. Rather than humbling themselves, and do what was required for true protection and restoration. Israel preferred calling upon the Egyptians for protection. Have you been there, dear brothers and sisters? Have you been there? While history says otherwise, while God says otherwise, but Israelites trusted their own intellect and logical reasoning and decided that Egypt wasn't that bad after all. Especially when compared to threatening Assyrians. The Israelites figured out through their inductive and deductive reasoning that they would be allies with Egypt and the Egyptians would deliver them. And Isaiah 30 records, begins with 
the first five verses records God's response. Isaiah chapter 30 verses 1 through 5. And we all need to hear this dear brothers and sisters because we all fall in that trap. We all need to hear what is God's response here to the Israelites. Isaiah chapter 30 verses 1 through 5. God says, Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel but not of me, and who devise plans but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame. And trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. For his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people who could not benefit them. Or be help or benefit. But a shame and also a reproach. Your brothers and sisters. The truth is Israel didn't need Egypt. Israel needed God, Yeshua HaMashiach. And so do you and me. So do you and me today. Today, where are you looking up to for deliverance, dear brothers and sisters? Your own strength, your own intellect, your friends and family, or on YouTube channels? Dear brothers and sisters, I don't know about where you're looking for deliverance. But our dear fellow brethren, I do know one thing. That you won't find your deliverance anywhere else but in Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach alone. And dear brothers and sisters, when we rely on Messiah, we rely on him alone and solely on him to deliver us. We don't try to help him. We don't try to help Messiah to help us out. God does not help those who help themselves. God help only helps those who come to the end of themselves. That's the truth, dear brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, at his best, man can pose to be a mighty problem solver, but he cannot be an omnipotent God. Your brothers and sisters, contrary to the serpent's suggestion in the Garden of Eden, people simply can't be divine. We cannot become God. Eve fell for that craftiness and was trapped. She couldn't become divine, but the fact ended on the contrary. Death entered in her life. That's what happens, dear brothers and sisters. And today, today also nothing has changed, dear brothers and sisters. Nothing has changed. The higher we rely on humans for deliverance, the more disappointed and broken we are going to feel. I'm sure we all have been there, dear brothers and sisters. And perhaps sometimes, somehow, when it's all over, we feel, feel disgraced and embarrassed. And all the other negative emotions follow and we don't even understand why. why. Why is that happening? Have you been there, dear brothers and sisters? Today are you looking for a human deliverance? For a human to deliver you out of that pit right now? Dear brothers and sisters, people can indeed help us. There is no doubt about it. We are here to help each other. People can indeed help us, but they can heal us. People can lift us. But they can't carry us. Occasionally people can pull us out of a pit. But they cannot keep us out of that pit. Nor can they set our feet upon a rock. Let alone be the rock higher than us. Dear brothers and sisters. When we come out, of a, come out of a pit. If our idea of stability. Is standing on another human's shoulders. They eventually, the human's clear feet will inevitably crumble and we will take a tumble. The job is too big for any human. The job is too big. Hey, brothers and sisters, since pit dwelling is primarily a state of mind where the enemy actually puts us into that zone. Effective deliverance also takes the ability to know and understand the human mind. Which contrary to our belief that a human neurologist or a human psychologist or a human counselor or a human psychiatrist, they cannot do. Only Messiah and Messiah alone, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth can do. That's the truth, dear brothers and sisters. The truth is only God can hang out with us through the entire length and depth and width and height of our need of our problem. 
No one else will. No one else can. Your brothers and sisters, the enemy more than often times finds a way to deceive us. Where we frame our own pits and we become the victim. And all of this is orchestrated by Satan himself. Actually, Paul tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 that for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a dishonor of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Dear brothers and sisters, Messiah, knowing all we are, knowing what we are, all what we are feeling and all what we are going through. Yeshua HaMashiach in his great compassion overflows with love and willingness to deliver us every single time we are in the pit. Every single time. Even after the Israelites sought the help of the Egyptians. Inviting the chastisement of God. What did what do we see? What does God say? Isaiah chapter chapter 30 verse 18 records. Therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. And therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Dear brothers and sisters. Did you pay heed to the la last bit of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18? Which is telling us. Let, let, me, let me read that last bit again. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Blessed are all those who wait for Messiah. Now dear brothers and sisters let me ask. You couple of questions. Are you today waiting upon Messiah? Is your soul longing to be with him truly? And dear brothers and sisters, if you have answered yes and yes to those questions, then as the scripture recalls, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, you are already blessed. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Receive that blessing right this moment if you're truly waiting for him. Get blessed. Let those blessings bear fruits for Messiah. And not for our, to gratify our flesh. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, waiting upon the Lord is indeed a blessing. Though the enemy might point it otherwise. Moreover, dear brothers and sisters, in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18, we see Isaiah records, The Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. Now, doesn't that echo and ring in our minds that that Lord will wait and that he may be gracious to you. And if it doesn't echo in, in your minds, in our minds, dear brothers and sisters, today is the time we need to preach that to our deceitful heart that Messiah's love endures forever and ever and ever. As Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 says, records that the Lord has appeared of old to me, saying Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, Jeremiah says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. Dear brothers and sisters, that's the attribute of a deliverer who can deliver us from our pits, from your pit. And today, today he will. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 tells us that if Messiah has begun a good work in us, he is faithful to complete it. Your brothers and sisters, a man at his best who tries to begin a good work to pull you and me out of that pit, wears out too fast, too soon and cannot finish it, cannot finish it. Paul tells us as a matter of fact in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. So here we are talking about the past, present and future tense, all the three possible tenses of deliverance, dear brothers and sisters. That's the kind of deliverance. From the pit, you and I are looking for the deliverance, which is not for a short time, but it comes with a lifetime warranty and goes beyond our lives. Dear brothers and sisters, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Dear brothers and sisters, every human effort will wear out. 
and will make us feel tired, depleted and empty. As a matter of fact, today, before we end, dear brothers and sisters, Lord himself outlines in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 8, gives us the contrast and the, as well as the results of our trust in man and trust in God. So Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 and 6, gives us a complete diagnosis of trust in man and a report card for that, the trust in man. And verses 7 and 8 gives us a complete diagnosis what happens and a report card when we trust in God. Let me read that real quick for you. Verses, Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 5 through 8. So the first two verses says about the trust in man and its report card. So thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. Strong words, dear brothers and sisters. Whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Are you still willing, dear brothers and sisters, are you still willing to bet on trusting man after what, after the complete diagnosis of what God is telling that cursed is the man who trusts in man and made flesh his strength, who's heart departs from the Lord for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Dear brothers and sisters Satan will always push us so that we trust in the tangibility whatever we can see but here we walk by faith and faith alone and not by sight so we are not here to trust human strength. We are all here together to pray for each other, to be put together, held together with Messiah, Christ spirit, Christ love and glorify him, dear brothers and sisters. Now let's read what God has, the complete diagnosis and the report card for who trusts in God. It's Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its root by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. Wow. Even the heat and everything, it cannot make the leaf yellow and all those things won't set in. Even with the heat, its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Even during drought, if we put our trust in God, we will be yielding fruit. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Dear brothers and sisters, today, today, let us shift our focus from mere humans to Messiah. Because, just because, dear brothers and sisters, it's easily accessible, more tangible, sounds good to our ears, and we can have a face-to-face -face conversation, doesn't necessarily mean that humans can deliver us out of the pit. No human can ever do that even at their best. Only Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, and he alone can do it, dear brothers and sisters. And today, today, right now, whatever pit you are in, he's calling you, dear brothers and sisters. He's calling you right this moment. Respond to his call. Can you hear him, dear brothers and sisters? He's calling you with your name. No matter what your pit is, how deep, how wide, how tall, Messiah will deliver you. He will keep on delivering you. He will set you free. If the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. You are free indeed. It comes with a lifetime warranty and it goes beyond. Come to Him today. He's calling you right this moment, dear brothers and sisters. Can you hear Him today? Our dear fellow brethren, He's calling you by your name. He knows all about the dimensions and magnitude of your pit. He has all. Figure it all out, dear brothers and sisters. Today the Lord is telling you as Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 through 13 records. That's exactly what the Lord is reiterating to you right this moment. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Come to him today. Call upon him today, dear brothers and sisters. He is indeed waiting for you with arms wide open. Look at the cross today. Look at the cross today. We thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again.
for viewing us for once again letting us share dear brothers and sisters what Messiah has and we hope dear brothers and sisters that the Spirit of God has indeed helped each one of us encourage each one of us to hold on in these end moments and to realize one fact that no matter whatever the pit the enemy has pushed you into pushed us into God will deliver each one of us out of all because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver us out of all and once again dear brothers and sisters Please do take this message to the Lord and whatever the Lord lays on your heart, lays on your heart, please do get back to us with your comments, with your inputs, with, you, with your suggestions, dear brothers and sisters. Indeed, we are no different, me and my family, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord has called us into this call and we go through our valleys, but Messiah holds us, dear brothers and sisters. And in our valleys, your inputs, your comments, your thoughts, your suggestions, Indeed does help us indeed does encourage us here. We are dear brothers and sisters. Let's keep praying for each other Let's keep up the faith. Let's fight the good fight and finish this race strong dear brothers and sisters Messiah is coming and he is coming indeed his coming is imminent It is any moment and one of these days We will meet on the other side of the chasm fall down at his feet and worship him forever and ever glory to the king of kings to the lord of lords to the name above every single name whose precious blood has delivered you and me and whose precious blood has given us given me the breath to speak and let's end with a word of prayer father i thank you once again lord for guiding me all through this message through your holy spirit and giving me lord the strength to convey this message father i pray today that through this message, may your mighty will and only your mighty will be accomplished. And we bind every strife, every unclean spirit coming at this video, which doesn't glorify your holy name. Father, we also thank you for all the warnings and messages which you are giving us. Staggering, Lord, staggering. Father, we continue to be astonished at the extremes, extremes, incredible extremes you have gone to that we might have understanding. We thank you, Father, today for your word and word incarnate. We thank you, Father, for our comforter, Ruach HaKodesh. We pray, Father, that you please bless all our dear brothers and sisters right this moment, viewing this message, and pray that I would, and Father, I pray that I would ask you to please, please do help us, help our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters, to give each one of us, all of us, an unending hunger, Lord, to do, dig into your word, to dig deeper, to dig diligently, Lord, also, Father, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, please, please do open your words to our hearts and lives so that we might better understand the times, that we might be like the sons of Issachar, who indeed understood the times, who knew what their nation had to do. Please do help us too, Father, today, to understand the times and also help us to understand, Father, precisely what you would have for each one of us in our personal lives. For our dear brothers and sisters, for our fellow brethren, that we might fulfill your desires in our lives rather than gratifying our flesh. Today, help us, Father, once again to raise the bar on each of our lives. To be just a bit more serious about our walk with our Messiah. To be just a little bit more intense about digging into your word. But above all, Father, help us today to be discerning, to hear your voice and guide our steps, Lord. We once again pray, Father, that please do bless all our dear fellow brethren, all our dear brothers and sisters, and guard their steps as we commit ourselves without any reservations whatsoever into thy hands, Father, in the name above every single name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again, and God bless each and every one of you. Shalom.